thank you for joining us tonight. And this is Answers for Life, and I uh, thank you for those of you who do write in with your questions. And I want to invite you, if you have a question and you want it to discuss, send it in. The address is down on the bottom of your screen, 337 Farmington Road, Somerville, South Carolina. And uh, let us know what your question is, and we'll try to get to it to discuss it. But tonight, we're going to be talking about what every one of you is involved in. Christmas. It's a celebration. It's a wonderful time. It's a happy time. It's a beautiful time. I love Christmas. Of course, I love life. When you get my age, you love life, period. But Christmas is such a wonderful time. Families getting together, uh, traveling, buying presents, getting presents. And all of that's part of it. I don't have any kind of negative thoughts about people celebrating Christmas. And you know, some people say, well, all these presents. Well, you know, I think Jesus sets pretty good precedence for us. And when the wise men come to see Jesus, what did they bring? Presents. They brought gifts. Matter of fact, John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave. His son was a gift. And so giving gifts is just an expression of love, concern, desire, and, and you just want to do something for somebody. Now, sometimes if you buy a gift because somebody else bought you one, well, I can understand that, but you don't really get joy out of that one. Uh, if you buy a gift just because somebody bought you a gift and you feel like you owe it to them, then that's not really a beneficial gift, and you're not going to really enjoy it. But uh, it's a pleasure when you give a gift to somebody and um, uh, they just open it and you see the excitement. Uh, now, I'm an impulse buyer. My wife is a plan buyer, but I'm an impulse buyer, so she has to kind of keep the reins on me a little bit once in a while. And I was in a store the other day and I saw something and I bought it and I had it wrapped up. I took it home. She said, what's that? I said, that's your Christmas gift. Can I open it? No, you can't open it. I'm not I said, I'm not like you. My wife and my daughter go out shopping together, buy their gifts, try them on, everything's fine, then take them home and wrap them and put them under the tree. That's, that's no fun for me. Don't tell me what you got. Let me open it up and be surprised. Christmas is such a wonderful time. We decorate. Well, that's pretty plain, too. Uh, we decorate. We make things look good. We, we want to light it up. And then Christmas carols, singing. Oh, what a, you know, God's people has always been known as a singing people. You know, even in Babylon, when the children of Israel were held in captivity, uh, they come to Daniel one day and said, these Babylonians are requiring of us a song. How can we sing the Lord's song? We're in a strange land. You know, in a sense, Daniel said, well, the reason you don't have a song is you hung your harps on the willow trees. If you go out and take your harps down and start tuning them up, you'll have a song in your heart. Doesn't matter what you're going through, you can have a song. And the angels, when they appeared to the shepherds, what did they do? They sang, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. And then what did he tell them to do? Go to Jerusalem, go to Bethlehem. See this thing that I've been telling you about. Rejoice in the message. Oh, listen, nativity scenes, put them up in your yard. Our neighborhood, we kind of had a, a HOA meeting, and we said we are at liberty to put any kind of nativity scenes we want to in our yards because we want people to know we're Christian. And I put out a Mary and Joseph in my front yard. People ride by my house. They know I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. And this is the time of the year, Christmas. But now listen, don't forget, he's no longer the baby in the manger in Bethlehem. He's no longer a little child in Bethlehem. He grew up. He became a young man. He became a Pharisee. Became a priest. But then at age 30, he stepped into his own ministry. And for three and a half years, he did his ministry, and then he did what he came here for. He submitted to the cross. So he's not the baby in Bethlehem. He's this crucified, resurrected, living Jesus Christ. And so celebrate Christmas, celebrate his birth. He couldn't have died if he hadn't been born. So we celebrate his birth. 
Uh, I celebrate my birthday every year. <laughs> I'm glad they're coming. Somebody was talking about age. I said, well, I'm glad I'm this age. If I were, the, the alternative is not attractive at all. So be happy. Be rejoiceful. Now, I don't want to put a negative connotation to this, but did you know Christmas time is one of the most depressing times? We have more alcohol, more drugs, more crime. All of this is committed from now till after the first of the year than the rest of the year. It's sad, but some people celebrate the wrong way. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. We're celebrating him coming into this world. So put up your Christmas tree. Decorate it pretty. Put on your Christmas music and rejoice. Don't let these nondescript people talk about it's, it's a pagan tradition to decorate a tree or it's a pagan position to do all these things. You can tie anything to anything if you try hard enough. Christmas is the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. Now we know he wasn't born December the 25th. Reality is there wasn't a December the 25th when he was born. The Roman calendar didn't come into place until uh, we call it B.C. and A.D. Uh, B.C. is before Christ. A.D. is after death. And so December the 25th was just, a, we know it was about this time of the year or something. The date is not what's important. The event is what's important. Celebrate Jesus Christ. Now, last week, uh, I mentioned to you that here at Faith Assembly, uh, a production is done, and it's called Scrooge. And with me tonight is uh, the guy who, oh, listen, I see him so many times working night and day. This is a full production. But uh, Rail Strickland is the producer of this Scrooge, and he's with us tonight just to talk about Laurel. So good to have hey, you, man. Good to be here. How many people do you have involved in the production of Scrooge? Uh, I would, you know what, I haven't counted exactly, but I, roughly we've got about 75 people that are involved in making the whole production work. Amen. Uh, that's from, uh, the, of course, you have the, the uh, actors, the, the drama team. Uh, then you've got uh, the singers, uh, choir. You've got backstage people that are, um, pulling off different, you know, special effects and uh, things like that, moving props in and out. You've got sound uh, technicians in the booth. You got lighting. Um, then the backstage again. You've got uh, costume, makeup. Um, so all in all, it's easy to say there's about 75, maybe a little more, if I yeah. sat down and you know counted them up. Uh, but right off the top of my head, it's, it's at least 75 people. My. And that takes a long time to get all that put together. Yeah, it does. It's a long process. Uh, we start uh, we start rehearsals with music in September, um, and you know it's like meeting uh, once a week. And then shortly after that, I think the drama team they started in October, um, and they you know right after us, and they started putting their team together and breaking it down into different scenes and rehearsals and stuff. Um, then as we get closer to it, right after Thanksgiving, uh, I take that back, before Thanksgiving, I actually it was like two weeks before Thanksgiving, we started uh, actually building the set. So uh, it's That's it's a, a major thing. operation, because I know I watched you during the weeks, really, yeah. that they worked on this, and it's a regular steel stage right. with steel structure mm -hmm. and all of this that, that you actually build in the, in the stage of yeah, the church. We, uh, when we first started doing this program, I was trying to think, it was probably back in uh, 05, uh, 2005, and we had gotten some, um, some steel uh, from a, this, this company that was uh, taking down another building, so we got a real, real good deal on it. Yes. Now, we had to customize it and fabricate it, um, you know, do some welding, cutting, et cetera, to make it uh, work and to our design, but we had some great guys that uh, would think tank with me, you know. I'd call mm -hmm. them a dream team. We'd sit in, at a table and draw out stuff, you know, and get these ideas of how we could make it work. So, but we decided to, I had done some other productions made out of wood structure. Uh, you have to do a lot of cross members and stuff, but mm -hmm. with steel, you don't have to do as many uh, cross bracing and stuff. So it actually bolts into the steel structure of the building itself. Uh -huh. The way our building is made, we have a, 
a steel beam across the back uh, that's attached to the building. And then everything comes, is bolted and connected to that and then comes off of it. So it's very sturdy, but it's designed that way so that we have two floors. Mm -hmm. We actually have two levels uh, so that uh, downstairs is the main street uh, where uh, Scrooge does his business in the town, people and so forth. And then upstairs on the second level, we have Scrooge's bedroom on one side uh, where a couple of scenes take place. Uh, and then on the opposite side on the second floor is his office. So uh, it has to hold the weight, uh, you know, furniture, people, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So, it, yeah, it's, it's pretty sturdy. It takes us about two weeks to uh, put all the structure together that's bolted together and then decorated with all the stuff on it. Um, so, it, yeah, it's at least a two-week process of, you know, doing that. Of course, we have to uh, pause on the weekends because uh, we still have Sunday service on the same right. stage, uh, so forth. So, uh, it's a lot of... It's a lot of moving. It, oh, man, a lot of moving. And then after you've got it up, then you start with the other things like uh, lighting that takes place underneath the, the top floors and... Um, and then, of course, from the out front, uh, we, we bring a lift in. Mm -hmm. uh, it, we drive it into the sanctuary right. <laughs> down the middle aisle, and it goes up and, and directs or uh, aims the different lighting uh, from different positions. So, yeah, it's a pretty in-depth uh, program yeah. um, that we do. And So you actually have a building in a building. Pretty I mean, much, yeah. Build, it yeah, would, pretty much. It would be the same strict structure as a regular mm -hmm. office building or something like that as far as yeah. building it in there. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, that's yeah, it's pretty massive. <laughs> you got to have some dedicated people to do oh, that. Oh, man, too. we do. Because all uh, of us volunteer, right? Every bit of it is, is uh, volunteer. I mean, people just get involved. Uh, I have a great gentleman, uh, um, Larry Stanley, uh, who was a retired engineer from uh, John Deere, actually. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, he, he does a lot of stuff. I'll get these crazy ideas for a or a prop or a scene, and uh, we always joke about it. One particular um, part, in, uh, an effect in the in the scene, I drew it out on a napkin. I had this crazy idea, and you know, you just grab whatever, mm -hmm. and I'm not an artist at all, so <laughs> it was pretty rough. So I'm sketching it out on this napkin, and I'm looking, I say, could that happen? You know, could we make that? And so Larry takes it home on his computer and brings back a detailed drawing of this thing. My. I mean, he had, he had figured it out, how to measure it, all this kind of stuff, and uh, and it works. So <laughs> every performance, you know, I laugh about that little little drawing that he made uh, come to life. So it's people like that, uh, people in in lighting that they'll spend time, you know, come in after work and go up on that lift and aim lights and direct lights and um, just just a massive yeah, amount you know, of work that goes the, into it. The rail, we look at the people up there that are doing those parts, and there's a tremendous amount of learning to do they have to memorize these lines oh yeah yeah it's a lot of but then a lot of memorization a lot of times we don't think the light that's shining down on them the changing mm -hmm. of the lights the sound the right. microphones that each one that takes a lot of work and skill and those guys are never seen oh yeah even the backstage crew uh, people don't realize when a scene changes a curtain opens and closes somebody does that Right. It doesn't just happen. When a curtain closes and the next time it opens, there's difference. Even uh, small things like chairs or tables or furniture change, that takes people to do that. Mm -hmm. And those people, again, as you said, they've, they're never seen. Uh, people don't know who they are, uh, but they'll see you know, the characters and the acting and, and don't know really uh, who's going on at, mm -hmm. uh, you know, behind the scenes. So on the, on the last song uh, of the production, as we're closing it out, uh, we have all the cast members that are backstage. A lot of them start coming out, and uh, they join them on because it's a medley yeah. of Christmas carols at the end. So they come out and sing with us, and people start seeing these people uh, popping up on the second floor or in the floor, and they're all dressed in black because they've been moving around in in uh, in the background. So it's pretty cool, but is it is amazing to me the commitment and the time that people put in and they know they're not going to be seen they yeah. they know uh i'm not the star per se but uh but what they do is such a vital right. important you know part of it uh, you know the whole program is called uh, the gospel according to scrooge and it's not original from us uh, we we purchased uh, the license to perform it to, to put the mm -hmm. production on um, 
and it, it's, you know, I'm trying to think, it was probably the first time I saw, heard about the program, it was 25, 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that tells you how old this, this uh, program is. It's patterned after, you know, the Dickens uh, uh, story, yeah. Carol, the Christmas Carol and all, but uh, it amazes me how that the program is, it's that old, we've been doing it several years, and people still commit their time and their talent to it, knowing that it's, it's not about who's the star or who's doing this part or that part, but it all comes together to make something mm -hmm. beautiful happen and, and touch people's lives, you know. So I want us to talk about Scrooge a little more a little bit later, but I think we have a, a shot of Main Street. Yeah. I, think, mm -hmm. I think we have a shot of, of the Main Street to give right. people some idea of what it looks like on the stage when you see it. And uh, so if we could have that little shot, you could see just the Main Street you can explain what's happening yeah, there. This is uh, Scrooge coming across the uh, front, the townspeople in the back. You'll see a lot of the backdrop in uh, there that was all painted and uh, on curtains and uh, on some, uh, some of that stuff is actually styrofoam, <laughs> but it looks like rock. Uh, so it's, uh, it's amazing how all that comes together. But uh, in that scene, he was uh, going across in the main street in one of the uh, main scenes and talking to Fred, uh, Chatsworth, different characters there. But it's, uh, it's pretty neat. You, uh, if you haven't seen it, you got to come. Amen. Uh, it's not just because it's us. It's just a neat story, yes. uh, the way that they put it together. And you know now, you talk about the story. I know there's a movie, Scrooged. Mm -hmm. Then we have a Christmas story, mm -hmm. which is basically right. the same thing. Of course, Charles Dickens, you know, Scrooge. And this is the gospel according to Scrooge. Right. In a brief or... Explain why this one is different from the others and why this one is so meaningful. Well, in the original Charles Dickens story, uh, what he put together, many people do not realize that uh, where Charles Dickens was in his faith, but he definitely had a faith in God. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to portray a message himself uh, through his literary uh, ability or talent, the way that he wrote the original, you know, that, that mm -hmm. story. Um, I, he was placing or putting messages in there for people to, to grab a hold of. Uh, he did it to appeal to many people across a wide, wide range. So the way he wrote it was, was great. But what the difference between the original story and, and what we do, uh, this was put together by uh, John Worry, uh, was the, is the, the character we got it from or, or the gentleman we got it from years ago. And he put the story together. The, the main difference is he brings out the message of Jesus Christ uh, more to the forefront. Uh, you, when you read the original story of Charles Dickens, you won't, you won't see Jesus Christ, that name mentioned as such. It's, it's uh, more of a character change. He realizes the wrong, the way that he's lived, and he wants to make a character change, and he goes through all that through uh, the three different ghosts that he sees, the, you know, the ghost of Christmas past and then future and, and all of that. So all of that makes him begin to uh, see where he is. Ours, um, the same, same story, same elements are there, but there is a definite, definite difference in that Jesus Christ is used. He talks about giving his, his life uh, to the Lord at the end of it when he makes uh, a transition. He says, uh, Lord, if you'll have me, if you'll have me, I will make this change I will do this and I will do that so it's a dramatic uh, you know change and then one of the songs uh, several of the songs were put together specifically with that purpose uh, so one of the songs at the end says uh, it's called what do you say uh, what do you say when you get a brand new heart what do you say when you get a brand new start uh, when Jesus makes a miracle it's wonderful to see see those are the lines in the song that you won't hear or see in a in the original uh, Charles Dickens story, but you will definitely hear that line when Jesus mm -hmm. makes a miracle. And the miracle is how he changes us, how he changes our heart and our life. So the story uh, actually beces an evangelical tool. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's amazing the people that come and, and afterwards the stories that they tell us. Mm -hmm. uh, just the other night we had a gentleman said, you know, I've never heard the story about God or Christ in that way. And he said, my kids have never heard it. So it was just, you know, it's amazing. It's a unique tool. You know, right. you said when you started this pro uh, tonight's program that 
Christmas is one of your favorite times. Well, it is my favorite time of yeah. the year, it, without a doubt. I love the celebration. People, as you said earlier, they get, you know, some people get nervous and afraid of the gifts and the commercialism and all that stuff. Sure, it's there, uh, but it's the reason it's there they cannot deny is because of Christ's birth. That's right. You can talk about Santa Claus all you want and you can worry about that, but how did that all get started? It became, it started out of the story of, of Jesus and, and uh, you know, what, what is Santa Claus, Saint Nick, everything reverts back to the birth of, of Jesus. So I love it, I, um, though it's a lot of work to put on the gospel according to Scrooge and there's a lot of time and involvement um, it's a lot still of patience. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> it's still it's still a ministry. It's still something right. that has a message that people will come. So, um, you know, you, you you get past the time and the effort and all of that and you say, you know, it's got a message in it and it's it's touching lives and it's making an impact. People will come and see a program like that 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 uh, have not been open before to the the message of Jesus and who he is. Well, you know, Rel, I look at you kind of like an artist. If you went downtown on Bay Street and you walked up behind an artist and he has a easel with a, a board in front of him and he's got a little splotch of paint here, a little bit of paint up here, and you stand behind him and you look at it, and you, well, what is that? Doesn't make any mm -hmm. sense. But see, he could take the brush and put a little bit of paint in the middle of that canvas but the truth is, he is looking at the finished product. In his mind, he sees that painting completely. And he knows what it's going to look like when he finishes it. Mm -hmm. But if you're standing there, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and so that's the reason I think people that can put on a production like you do. I know you had different ones uh, practicing their parts in different parts of the building. I mean... They, mm -hmm. they practice their parts individually in each part, I think, before you bring them together. And you can look at the parts over here, but in your mind, you know how it's going to look when you finish it. And so that's a talent. That's a yeah. calling of God. To be honest, and sometimes I'm not sure how it's going to look. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you get the ideas uh, and you think how it might work. Uh, but then, again, when, when God uses other people, and their talents and their abilities, it, it makes it work, you know. Again, that little story about the drawing on a, on a napkin, uh, it, it was a crazy idea, but yet God, you know, sent me, Larry, yeah. who could take that idea and expand on it. Same thing with lights. Uh, you know, sometimes they go, hey, can we light this this way? Or what if we put a different color in that? The other guy takes it and goes with it. So, mm -hmm. you know, your illustration of, of an artist with a, with a painting, when you look at his paint board, you know, they'll put all kinds of different colors, and it looks like somebody just threw a bunch right. of blobs of, of paint on there. But yet, they, he, they're able to take it and, and put it, but it, each one each one of those colors is important, and how they blend it together and mix it together. So, um, you know, I feel blessed and honored that all these people would work together and say, hey, let's, let's make this thing uh, happen, even when I can't interpret, you know, the yeah. idea or the dream. Uh, I, I refer to them often as our, our dream team because it takes a team to make a dream become a reality, you know, to make I, all of that work. I think we got one other still picture that we want to show them to sort of give them a taste. The other one was the Main Street. Yeah. I think this one is a scene with Scrooge. and, and yeah, he's uh, up but in the uh, office. Yeah, up in the office. Yeah. That sort of give an idea. This is, this is a shot of... Oh, you can tell him what it is. Well, he's uh, Scrooge is there in the office with his uh, nephew Fred that comes in, and uh, just looking at that one shot, you got costumes, makeup, uh, uh, the back wall, lighting, and sound. All that's going on in that one little shot that you don't really realize. And that's up appearance. on the second floor. Right, that's on the second floor uh, that you see taking place there. So um, it's uh, it's it's pretty it's pretty complicated. Uh, mm -hmm. But yet it's uh, it's simplified when you break it down into the, all the little diff different pieces. But it's cool. We got two more productions, and that's this Saturday night, 6 right. o'clock, mm -hmm. this coming Sunday night at right. 6 o'clock. And uh, normally, well, we have tickets, but they don't have to have a ticket right. since it's, they're watching by it's TV. It's pre-admission. We just make the tickets as a kind of a promotion thing. Yeah. People will give them out to, to their friends and remind them 
about the times and, and location and stuff. So yeah. I want to issue an invitation, if you would, to come. This is Faith Assembly. It's on the Interstate I-26, but it's on the frontage road. You can get off at the Somerville exit and then come on the frontage road, or you can get off at Goose Creek, College Park exit, and come up the frontage road. And it'll be 6 o'clock Saturday and 6 o'clock Sunday, uh, the production. How long is the production? It's, it's about an hour and a half, okay. uh, hour and 45 maybe. We have an intermission in the middle. Uh, we uh, work it right into the program, into the story. Uh, Fezzi Wig, who runs the, the mercantile shop there, <laughs> he yeah. invites people to come and, and celebrate, and, and everybody goes out and enjoys punch and cookies in the foyer uh, to break it up, give people a chance to uh, stretch their legs or whatever. And then they bring them back in uh, for the uh, second half of it, and, and it just ma it blends it, makes it a part of the part of the program. So, take the time this Saturday night, six o'clock. Come a little bit early, get a good seat. And uh, as I said, we you don't have to have a ticket. It's free. It's it's uh, no charge, and we just want you to come in and enjoy this production of the gospel according to Scrooge. And uh, I'll tell you, you will leave here amazed, rejoicing, and it will really be a good time. Get the family together. Get your neighbors together. And uh, just bring them out to see, you know, people go down to Dock, the Dock Street Theater and other theaters to see productions that's not as professional as this one right here is. And so you, you make it a point to come out Saturday night, be here about 5.30, the uh, play starts at 6, and then Sunday night at 6 uh, also. And uh, we'll be looking for you. You won't be sorry you came. I enjoy it every time I've seen it. I look at it and I see it. I've read the story, but this one is different. It's not like the Scrooge you saw in the movie, and it's got the same story as Charles Dickens, but this is the gospel according to Scrooge. In other words, you will see the Christmas story alive in giving. And so uh, be here Saturday night, about 5.30. Sunday night, program starts at 6 o'clock. And uh, I'm so glad that you've joined us tonight and wanted to just share this with you. And Laurel, it was so good to have you. And uh, man, thank you. You do a fantastic job of that production. Well, I wouldn't have, I couldn't do your job. <laughs> But uh, God bless you. Let us hear from you. Give us, give us a call or give us, uh, uh, drop us a note. If you have a question, please send it to us and we'll try to deal with it. But God bless you. And again, thank you for watching. Join us each Wednesday night uh, at 1030. And we'll be so happy for you to join with us. God bless you. Keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. And go with you and keep you healthy. And enjoy Christmas. Don't let all the, the negative people sap the joy. God bless you.